flat screen, you might get HD, or you might not. DirecTV now has over 170 HD channels, all in high def, all the time. The most full-time HD channels. Another reason 30 million people agree. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Batman Arkham City is the most critically acclaimed game of the year. <laughs> DLC bundle available now. Rated teen. Batman Arkham City Lockdown. Now available on iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Before Allegra, I was constantly fighting indoor allergies. After Allegra, I found peace. Only Allegra combines fast, non-drowsy, 24-hour relief of your toughest indoor allergy symptoms. And it relieves my outdoor allergies, too. After Allegra, I have it all. ESPN News exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Lights, please, lights, please. Turn off the lights. So now everything just seems so right. Now you make the darkness seem so bright. I'm feeling like things gonna be alright. Oh. Welcome back to the Ramada Old College Classic, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. We're in Oklahoma City, and the Sooners of Oklahoma, three-point lead over Houston as we get set for the start of the second half. Welcome back courtside with Doug Gottlieb. I'm Mark Kestisher, and uh, Oklahoma on perimeter shooting and pretty good rebounding also uh, with the three-point lead. Actually, both teams are shooting a three pretty well. Ten combined threes from both teams, and Stephen Pledger, who came in fourth in the country in three-point shooting, left nothing to disappoint. Three of four from three, but when you get a shooter like that in rhythm, it doesn't matter where it is on the floor, he shows the ability to have great arch, great extension, and then Kirk Van Slyke, who the Houston coaches said we want to see him be more physical, rebound better, drive better. You know what? This is his game. He's a catch and shoot big guy. He hit, he hit a couple threes. He hit that one two point shot, and he's really helped hang the, a lot of the Kooks to hang around, as have turnovers at times here late for Oklahoma. Yeah, you see the 15 bench points for Houston. Kirk Van Slyke with eight of those 15. Steven Pledger, three of those five Oklahoma three-pointers. He's got 13 points at the half, and uh, Steven Pledger also with seven rebounds, which we are told ties his career high in the first half alone. So great first half for Steven Pledger, but it'll be the Houston Cougars to have possession opening the second half. Oklahoma's won seven of its first eight. Going for a four-game win streak. Houston opened 3-0 to start the season. They have lost four of five, though the four losses by just seven points, including a couple of heartbreakers, one-point defeat. Two-point jumper goes down for Thibodeau. When you watch tape sometimes, you want to watch... You know, a lot of people get caught up in the big parts of the game. I actually like watching first plays of halves, first couple series of plays of halves, because you find out what the coach told the team as a point of emphasis. It's obvious Houston, they go to their Cowboys screen down look, and they wanted to get a little two-side ball screen action, getting Thibodeau off of that jump shot. And Thibodeau gets nailed on that foul. That'll be his first. As the uh, game plan on the other side for Lon Kruger trying to feed Fitzgerald down low and get that post working. Yeah, Fitzgerald, you also have Osby, but it doesn't hurt when you get this guy in the basketball. <laughs> Steven Pledger, six of seven from the field, including three threes so far. And we told you about those seven rebounds. J.J. Thompson is on the floor with Leon Gibson. This is the same starting five they went with to open the game with Alandis Harris and Joseph Young, normally starters, coming off the bench. And knocking down the baseline jumper is Gibson. And they've done a great job of taking Oklahoma out of their pressure defense, and they're able to get in their op offensive sets and work that ball screen action. Osby got by Thomas. Thomas got a late hand in there, and here come the Cougars, chance for the lead. Three-pointer up and in. J.J. Thompson giving Houston the lead. Interesting that Lon Kruger's letting them play through it. Offensively, they're fine, but they're not able to take Houston out of anything they want. Their pressure defense was far better to start the game with the same lineups on both sides, and Houston just exudes confidence. They've taken the best punch Oklahoma has, and they're still standing. In and out. 
Houston with a chance to build on this lead. Simmons with a head of steam. Two steps in the lane and a basket. We'll see if Lon Kruger lets him continue to play through it. And Simmons created the last three. And a jump shot in the corner for J.J. Thompson. Now he creates for himself. 9-2 run to open the second half. Terrible shot. And the loose ball on the floor. Osby got the last hand in. And now they'll say tied possession. It's going to stay with Oklahoma. Well, here's that transition for Houston. As John Simmons pushing in transition. Gibson actually deflects the ball. He didn't even try to. And then Simmons himself all the way to the goal. He is that big, long step he likes. Nice speed, Fitzgerald missing from point blank, but Osby an offensive board and a putback. That's the difference in this team is that they have an Osby to come and clean it up for Fitzgerald, who at times misses some bunnies around the basket because he's a BTR guy, a below the rim guy. Romero Osby, a junior, transfer. Their leading rebounder, seven and a half per game. Three and a half of those come off the offensive glass. Two point Cougars lead. Sean Thomas, nice turnaround move. At Achilleen, Texas, just north of Austin. Houston's had five offensive possessions. They've gotten five good shots. Impressive start to the second half for the Cougars and a foul on Simmons. That'll be his first. Osby's a pretty good defender. Tayshawn Thomas doesn't really have an angle, but he takes his time, comes back to his strong right hand. Now you see why he was a widely regarded top 100 ESPNU recruit. The ability to go over that left shoulder with a nice little jump hook. Alabama, Memphis, Cal, Temple, all the schools that were interested in his services. Stayed in his home state, playing in Houston. Loose ball, Thibodeau. Here comes Thompson into the front court. Been a Cougars half so far. Ooh. No look, Gibson though missing. A little too far under that rim. But a great no look feed from J.J. Thompson. And Thompson is so upset with Gibson, <laughs> rightfully so. Leon Gibson in your hands, big, big fella. Big fella. As and a former point guard, that's an assist killer, isn't oh, it? What do you call that? Oh, you just look at the guy. You just look at him. You owe me. You owe me. <laughs> look at Alvin Brooks saying, come on, take a dribble. Take a big step, dunk the basketball. On his way out as Alandis Harris is in. Here's Simmons off the feet, fouled, and score the bucket. Tremendous inbounds play. Both teams actually have scored off their past two inbounds plays. As the set takes you to one side, looking for the shooter in the corner. Then it takes you looking for Thomas underneath, and Simmons comes streaking down the lane, a wide open lane. Tyler Neal the foul, his second three-point play for Jonathan Simmons. And the Cougars lead up to seven. They were down three at halftime, first four minutes of the second half. Clark putting it on the deck. Offensive foul on Clark as the freshman Thomas took the charge. Oh, you only had three turnovers in the first half, but one of them was an identical drive, an identical charge by Cam Clark. Second time, or second foul on Cam Clark. And now Lon Kruger is in the timeout zone, so he doesn't have to call one. But boy, this run, I mean, it's like a completely different basketball game. Say when we were about, what, two and a half minutes into the half, there was a question whether or not he should take the timeout oh. or let his team play through it. Harris missed, Thibodeau gets the loose ball, and the putback by Tayshaw Thomas been everywhere that Houston's needed him so far in the second half. And, and Oklahoma was very lucky that Alanis Harris missed that little turnaround drop step, but there's no fight in them in the, on the board. Here's Neal from the corner. Offensive rebound, Fitzgerald fouled. He'll get some free throws, but it will be after the timeout. Tayshawn Thomas, his third foul, but he's also been big in this first four and, minutes. And Houston has looked like a completely different team, even when they're not hitting jump shots or drives, simply keeping the basketball alive around the hoop. And Tayshawn Thomas, Cooks up nine.
Bucknell, Syracuse at 7, and College of Charleston, Louisville at 9. Tuesday on ESPNU. With DirecTV, you can start watching in one room, pause, and continue watching in any other room. Now lock in your price until 2013. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. For more than 60 years, Wrangler has been making jeans more comfortable. Fine by me. Wrangler jeans give you comfort where you want it. They don't cut and bind like most jeans. Hey, don't wear Wranglers because of me. Yeah. Wear them because of you. You shape. It fits around you. It gives you more room where you need it. That's why Wranglers fit so good. Room where you need it. Comfort where it counts. It's all about the you. Man, these jeans feel good. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Not bad, Dale. Thank you. Appreciate it. You too. are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. You're watching ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Here in Oklahoma City, the Houston Cougars 16-4 run to open up the second half. The Blue Bloods of college basketball are going to take over ESPNU Monday night at 7. North Carolina will play host to Nickel State. Then at 9 Eastern rematch of the 08 Elite 8 showdown between Davidson and number 12 Kansas. Then Tuesday night starting at 7 Eastern. Two of the remaining unbeaten Syracuse. Big road win today. Number four Louisville. I'm going to hang on against Memphis. They're trying to stay unblemished. All part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. Damon Brooks, an outstanding sophomore for the Davidson Wildcats. They got a chance to, to train with Steph Curry because Steph Curry, during the lockout, went back to get his degree. Matter of fact, when he first went to Golden State and the lockout was over and he started working out in order to get in shape for training camp, he was also studying for finals at the exact same time. Of course, uh, Steph Curry now under the tutelage of our former colleague Mark Jackson. Yeah. They're going to take on, what, Chris Paul and the Clippers? Yeah. Christmas Day on ESPN and Blake Griffin who's from here in Oklahoma City. That's can, right. I, can I do you what can I do you do it one more one more yes right. the Thunder yeah. Christmas Day here against Orlando well, I was actually gonna play oh, our okay. second game which has Oklahoma State and Bill Self will tell anybody who listens you know because remember that was the year that Sean Sutton was fired at Oklahoma State there were a lot of rumors that there was a blank check from Mike Holder who's sitting about five rows behind me to come back to his alma mater and be the head coach and he jokes it you know had had uh, had Davidson hit that last three, he might he might actually be the coach at Oklahoma State instead of the coach at Kansas. They get to the Final Four, they win a national championship, they give him a new contract, they redo they redo the outside of Fog Allen Fieldhouse and the rest is history. And the same old story here in Oklahoma City, Stephen Pledger continuing his onslaught. 15 points, seven rebounds, trying to get the Sooners back into this one. And Tyler Neal steps in the passing lane, and a foul against Houston. And Alandis Harris will pick up his third. That's the fourth team foul on Houston in this half. Now, if you're Oklahoma, you want whatever your go-to offensive set is. Oklahoma just three of ten shooting so far in the half. Fitzgerald open, a little too strong. Houston, which has hit seven of its first ten of the half, coming back down the floor. Boy, it seems like Alandis Harris, coming off the bench in both halves, really hasn't been able to find his groove yet. No, he's not comfortable with it. And you and, see Van Slyke tries yep. to force it in there, and Van Slyke misread that he thought he had a seal on a high low. And off the turnover, the red hot pledger will feed Fitzgerald. Back and down and a push. Wow. Is that on Harris or on Van Slyke? That's on Van Slyke. Yep. That's his first. Eddie Sutton in the house. 
He's got a lot of ties to a lot of coaches in the building tonight. He sure does. Of course, he is a native of Kansas. Played at Oklahoma State, coached at Oklahoma State. And James Dickey was his assistant going back to his Arkansas days. James Dickey grew up in Arkansas, went to Central Arkansas. Became the head coach at Texas Tech after they were at Kentucky together. Had a great run there. Took a couple of years off before coming to Houston and a blocking foul. And this time, Harris will get called, and that's going to be number four. It's been that kind of evening for their leading scorer, Landis Harris. 16 points a game, and with 13.27 to go in regulation, we'll have to head to the bench. Well, there's one benefit that James Dickey has. There's a couple nickel and dime fouls against his Cougs trying to play defense. It's that he's used his bench extensively here. And matter of fact, his bench, in truth, is what's given him this lead. It's already 16 fouls in the half against Houston, and Clark working his way down the post. Getting strong, Oklahoma within five. Strong drive against Simmons. He and Clark kind of going at each other. There's no John, but every time the other gets the basketball, they drive it really hard at the other one. Simmons will try the three up top. Now some one and dones for Houston. been just off on his shot so far in this half, missing another one. Thibodeau, the alley. And not able to finish it was Jonathan Simmons. Here's a two-on-one. Here's Pledger, fouled and scores. 19 for Pledger and a chance to make it an even 20. And you're in a five-point game, and Thibodeau has his man wide open. You don't have to no-look an alley-oop. And then Pledger sees the smaller Thibodeau. I don't think that's a foul. I, I think it's called verticality. They've called several of those at both ends, and I disagree with them. Pledger smartly pump fakes, goes underneath the defender to draw the foul. Pledger's efficiency. Eight of nine. And the lights out free throw shooter as well. 20 points and a uh, record for him. Eight rebounds. But the key mistake was Thibodeau with the alley oop. It's not that he threw the alley oop. It's, you don't have to throw a no look pass for the alley oop. If you're throwing no your spot. If you're throwing a no look pass, if you're throwing an alley oop, right? And, and it's in transition, that means there's no one back. Just throw it next to the rim and let your teammate do the rest. Meanwhile, that missed opportunity contributing to seven straight Oklahoma points. See if Joseph Young can end the stretch. Cannot. And a loose ball foul on that rebound is going to go against Oklahoma. You know, that wasn't a great shot from Joseph Young because he had just checked into the basketball game. But I do like the fact that J.J. Thompson is eliminating any on-ball pressure from Oklahoma. Anytime they climb India, he just puts it on the deck and drives, and the pressure backs up. And now Oklahoma's just playing regular man-to-man -man defense, which is okay. But it's not what Lon Kruger no, usually brings. No, it's, it's not what they want. They want to get you playing full court. They want you to turn the basketball over. They want you to play a little bit faster than you're accustomed to. That foul on Clark was his third. Simmons trying to have his way with the smaller grooms. Gets a shot off but misses. Oklahoma now with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Poked away by Simmons. Nice play. And in the break, he will throw it down with two hands. I like Simmons. He's a competitor. He didn't like at all, at all, that Cam Clark was driving at his chin. He took a three and missed it. Then had a pull-up jump shot on Blair. Probably should have stuck with his right hand. Pokes it away, and that's been Blair's problem during his time at Oklahoma. Turnover prone. And that's going to be a three-shot foul on the Joseph Young foul. So we're going to have three free throws, but after the timeout. Uh, Houston keeps hanging around with outstanding defense from John Simmons. Cougs up four. We serve at the pleasure of the president in times like this. 
And if he says it's time for you to go, then it's time for you to go. My name is Michael Mitchell. I have the privilege of being a major in the Oklahoma Army National Guard. My name is Jay Mitchell. I've also had the privilege of serving as a Chief Warrant Officer in the Oklahoma National Guard. I got told on the 28th of August I'm being deployed. Come to find out we both landed on the same Ford operating base, literally 30 yards apart from each other. Jay brought over the Chickasaw flag and we actually flew the flag in Iraq. It was a sense of pride to have the flag with me. But you could look at it and, and knew where you came from. It's almost like a comfort zone, you know? You knew you're, you're from the unconquered, unconquerable tribe. I think the term brothers in arms finds a new meaning in my heart with having Jay so close to me in Iraq. We do have something that, you know, that we did together that you can never take away. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. I hate mornings. Great, I have 20 minutes. No time for coffee. Hello, my friend. Can't get it together in the morning? Try 5-Hour Energy. It's simple, effective, and unlike coffee, it's ready right now. No waiting, no hassle. Let's do this. 5-Hour Energy, the no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Back in Oklahoma City, the Houston Cougars set a 16-4 run to open the second half. That lead has been cut to four, and Stephen Pledger, one of the reasons the Sooners still in this. I mean, look at the numbers. This was coming into the game. And then you add into the fact that, uh, you know, he's eight of nine from the floor in this game, three of four from the free throw line, 20 points plus, as you pointed out, eight rebounds. He had seven at the break, which tied a career high. Stephen Pledger is expanding his game, but the strength of his game is that jump shot. And as you saw, number four in the Big 12 at 57.7. I mean, he's been dangerous over the years, but it's, he's been streaky. If he can right. be consistent like he's been so far this year, it's going to be huge for Longford. Well, they're getting better point guard play. And remember, they're all going to kind of need to collectively gather together and get more offense because Calvin Newell Jr., the sophomore from Philly, 6'1", kind of combo guard, who's coming off the bench but was averaging 13 a game. He left the program. He left the program. Like the officials the, are good. sorry about that. They're going to confer here because before the break, the ref put up the three fingers yeah, for a foul. Call. They called it a non-shooting foul, but now it'll be one and one because Houston's over the limit. Okay, that's the right call. It wasn't. Pledger was passing the ball, and that was the right call. They mistakenly believed that he was going for three. They didn't even have to go to the monitor. They did the smart thing, which was they just gathered together. Was he going up? Jeez. I know he's missed one, but it, fouling him. There's no such thing as a one-on-one. One. It feels like two shots. He's going to make them both. 21 points now for the Sooners junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. Of course, that was a point of strength. Going back to Jeff Capel, who came from VCU. The matchup here and a steal by Carl Blair, Jr. Finds the cutting. Grooms, who's fouled, and he'll get two shots. And just when I said J.J. Thompson played so well against pressure, here Blair, he, he ripped him once, then he rips it again. Second foul on J.J. Thompson. We're going to see a lot of Oklahoma free throws here the last 11 minutes of this game. And Grooms knocks down the first. Marion Thibodeau will come back into the Houston lineup, and J.J. Thompson will sit down. I'm sure Coach saw the same thing you saw. It can't happen. Can't happen in a close game. Can't lose the ball, and essentially he lost it twice. And you know, if there's a question in, as to why Jeff Capel was relieved of his duties by Joe Castiglione just really two years from being the number one team in the country, Blake Griffin suffers an injury against Texas, and they never truly recovered as they were beaten in the NCAA tournament by eventual no champion North Carolina. This, this all college class is a perfect example why. There's just, there was no buzz to the program. Fair or unfair, they had the number one recruiting class in the country, Tommy Mason Griffin and Tiny Gallon. Neither lived up to their expectations as people or as players. An NCAA investigation towards a former assistant coach. And then last year's season was just 
it was awful. No one went to Lloyd Noble, and there's no buzz about Oklahoma's program. And Lon Kruger has done a very good job early on of kind of reinvigorating some energy into the program. Oklahoma's always struggled to draw, even when Kelvin Sampson really had a role. And they won back to back to back Big 12 tournament championships. But nothing like we saw last year as both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State struggle to contend with the Thunder, which have taken over Oklahoma City. Mm. That off ball foul, Tyler Neal was his third. Here's Van Slyke, little jump hook. Van Slyke gets it back and has it blocked out by Honore. Got a new shot clock here. Here's Young driving into four defenders and scores. <laughs> Young drove. Joseph Young drove. He drives. He sees Van Slyke and he saw that Van Slyke couldn't finish the last time and he thought, you know what? I'm going to let the sucker fly myself. <laughs> Simmons the deflection this time first life we've seen from Houston since that first media time out of the second half Leon Gibson and an over and back and I thought you brought up a great point about Oklahoma City obviously you know this was college territory but the Thunder has really transformed this town from what they've been able to do the last few it's years. It's really remarkable I mean in, and and the same transformation has worked the other way at Oklahoma State which was a basketball baseball wrestling school has now become a football school Oklahoma City had a proud tradition of Oklahoma never stopped playing in the all college Oklahoma State really since since this building was built. It was a tremendous matchup. Pittsburgh and Zaga, others would come in here and the building would be filled. Usually about two thirds or three quarters Oklahoma State fans. But when Blake Griffin, who's a native of Oklahoma City, was playing for the Sooners, the place was full. Crimson and cream, Boomer Sooner. Meanwhile, when the Hornets were displaced by Hurricane Katrina, that really got things going here. And when Seattle moved here, that was not a team with a good record. I mean, it had a young Kevin Durant, yeah. but they have drafted extremely well. And uh, last year lost in the Western Conference Finals to the eventual champs. Dallas. $100 million put into a building that was barely a, barely a decade old. And here's a steal by Osby. Look out as he throws it down. Osby got a little away with a little NBA travel there <laughs> to finish it. And the Thunder will open up Christmas Day if we may uh, plug ESPN 8 Eastern time. Four games of the five on Christmas Day on the ESPN Family Network. And at this point, D12, Dwight Howard still a member of the Orlando Magic. Timeout called by James Dickey and maybe one of the reasons seeing this uh, defense and score. Romero Osby, the steal and the slam. Sooners down two. Thank you. For what? When things were tough, you kept believing in me. You helped make this happen. Thank you. Behind every open heart is a story. Tell yours with my open heart collection at K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. There are millions of reasons to give one, but the message is always the same. Keep your heart open, and love will always find its way in. You did it, Daddy. We did it. Every kiss begins with K. cancer three weeks before I was supposed to be leaving for college. I mean, it was a struggle um, with my health a little bit last semester. Anything that I go through from now on is nothing compared to what I went through a year ago. So I want to be an amazing person, amazing softball, and I just want to leave everything out on the field. If there's one thing that's always in short supply on the job site, it's the word easy. So we built it into every Roto Zip zip saw. Easy to hold and control, this multi purpose cutoff saw makes quick work of intricate cuts. And with a range of cutting wheels available, it can tackle almost any building material. The only difficult part is remembering who had it last. Right now, get a free X Wheels cutting blade with every zip saw purchase. Find out more at rotozip.com. Multi policy discount. Paperless discount, paid in full discount, homeowner's discount, safe driver discount, chipmunk family reunion, someone stole the nuts, 
Squirrel jail. Justice. Countless discounts. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Two point Cougars lead over Oklahoma. Here with 8.45 to go in the second half.